It's been two years since COVID-19 reached the United States. Since then, Americans have dealt with a swath of pandemic policy prescriptions across the country. In California, you were told to not see family during Thanksgiving. In Florida, you were barely locked down at all. Now it's time to ask the question, how did each state fare? Did more stringent lockdowns save lives, or did they devastate the economy and lives of young students while offering little health benefit? A comprehensive and revealing study from the National Bureau of Economic Research provides answers to that question, and the results defy the quote-unquote mainstream medical and media wisdom, especially when the mainstream opinion stated lockdowns were the only moral policy to deal with the pandemic. The study from Casey Mulligan, Stephen Moore, and Phil Kirpin compares COVID outcomes from all 50 states and the District of Columbia based on three variables, the economy, education, and mortality. To start, economic performance was based on two measures, unemployment and GDP. Obviously, state economies emphasize different industries. Since the pandemic had a far more negative effect on certain industries such as entertainment, energy production, mining, hotels, and food, the final unemployment and GDP results are adjusted for industry composition. For example, the collapse of tourism hit Nevada hard as trips to Vegas dwindled with the lockdowns and threat of disease. Energy-heavy states also suffered mass unemployment due to the global collapse of demand for energy. Education was based on the in-person schooling percentage for the 2020 to 2021 school year, with hybrid schooling weighted half. School closures may prove to be one of the costliest policy decisions made during the pandemic. A National Institutes of Health analysis found that life expectancy for high school graduates is four to six years longer than high school dropouts. Before the pandemic, 0.4% of high school students dropped out. During the pandemic, that figure increased to 2%. Applied to the whole population, America's public schools lost more than 1.1 million students in 2020. That means public high school closures led to an expected 4.4 to 6.6 million years of life lost in just the 2020 school year. That figure only accounts for public high school closures. It doesn't account for the dip in college admissions and the decline in quality of education when done remotely. One study found that school closures in 2019 to 2020 led to 13.8 million years of life lost. Closing the public school is a decision entirely under the control of policymakers. Almost all private schools were open. Mortality was determined by two measures, COVID-associated deaths reported to the CDC and all-cause excess mortality. The most widely accepted measure of pandemic impact on mortality is the all-cause death measurement. It captures the near-term mortality effects lockdown policies had, such as higher drug and alcohol-related deaths, and differences in underlying health being measured relative to the population's baseline. The infection mortality risk of COVID is extremely age-related, being 8,700 times higher in those aged 85 plus versus those aged 5 to 17. Thus, an age adjustment was applied to the number of observed deaths in each age group to bring the numbers in line with the standard U.S. population. The two other main mortality factors are obesity and diabetes both significantly increase the mortality risk of COVID-19 infection. Adjustments were made to bring those factors to baseline as well. One major study from Rand Corporation researchers found that lockdowns increased all-cause mortality to a statistically significant extent. Let's look at how these measures relate to each other. First, we have lockdown economies and mortality rates. Looking at this chart from the study, we can see that lockdown economies did not have better health outcomes. 
Simply put, the idea that Florida was willingly killing its citizens by keeping lockdowns brief was disconnected from reality. Because we know that the lockdowns did increase all-cause deaths, it's fair to say that stringent lockdown policies led to more deaths than if people were given the freedom to protect themselves as they saw fit. There was also a strong relationship between economic performance and education. Lockdown economies also had a higher rate of school closures. So states that underwent longer lockdowns faced more all-cause death and more expected years of lives lost due to school closures. Finally, let's combine all these measurements to find the top 10 and bottom 10 states in terms of mortality, economy, and education. The top rated states in order are Utah, Nebraska, Vermont, Montana, South Dakota, Florida, New Hampshire, Maine, Arkansas, and Idaho. The bottom 10 are New Jersey, the District of Columbia, New York, New Mexico, California, Illinois, Maryland, Nevada, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. These bottom 10 are dominated by states and the District of Columbia that had the most stringent lockdowns and were last to open up schools. And largely, their economies are still behind most others recovering from the pandemic. Remember when New York Governor Andrew Cuomo was praised for saving lives? He didn't. His policies devastated New York's economy and will have long-lasting impacts. Here is the main takeaway. The lockdowns did not save lives, but they did devastate economies and education. Governor Ron DeSantis was correct to end the lockdowns as mortality rates did not increase while economic and educational performance did. Freedom would have been the best solution. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and consider donating to the Heartland Institute to support more vibrant free markets, greater individual liberties, and more videos like this one.